Hello everyone, today we look at how we can connect Firebase and Flutter together and I will integrate it for Android, iOS and also the web. And Firebase is a tool with which you can write your whole backend and it also has like more possibilities so you can build much better apps. They have a lot of things like auto notification, hosting, a storage where you can put your images and files inside and also a database where you can put all your data inside and much 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 more like you can see here. And first of all we like to start by going to pubdev. And here we will find some packages we, which we want to use for our application. So first of all, we want to use the Firebase core package. Like it is saying, it's like the core, what we need to have. And so you go here to the installing section, copy this. And then you go into your Flutter project and go into this pubspec jungle file. And here under dependencies, we will add a new Firebase integration. So I write here comment so that you know exactly, okay, this is everything for Firebase. So first of all, we need this package. And yeah, let's go back to the browser. You can go here back and search again for another package, which is called Cloud Firestore. So this is the package which we use to write to the database and to read from the database. So I will also install it, put it again here under dependencies directly here. And the last thing what we need is Firebase storage. And there you can put all your files inside and download your files from. So go to the installing section again, copy this here. And yeah, I guess that's it. The next thing I also want to get here another package for downloading all of our files later. So I want to get the HTTP package. I go here again and search for it. So I go here to the installing section and just copy this dependency here and also put it here inside. Okay, that's about dependencies. So I just put it at the start so that we have everything set up for our app completely. And now we need to do some configuration stuff. So first of all, let's go to our web browser and type console.firebase.google.com. And here you can create a new project. You can name it, for example, Firebase Testing. So it's like you test your Firebase account, you can give it any name. You can here enable or disable Google Analytics. I will keep it on and then I continue. Then you can select your account. I will just take other and you have to first of all accept all these things. And then you can decide if you want to share your data with Google Analytics. So they will take all your data and do some benchmarks or whatever. So I don't want this. So I go here and then you need to uncheck all of this. And you can also choose here the country, so where your analytics is. I just choose, for example, let's take some country here in Europe. Netherlands is fine, I guess. So then I create this project and it takes some time to create this project here. All right, then you can click here on continue. And here you go, you get to this screen here. So basically you have an iOS app, an Android app and a web app, which we need to integrate. So you can go here directly to the project overview. This is the site here, or you can go also to the project settings. And here you see the same. So I go here to Android app and then we need to configure our Android application. So first of all, we need here this uh, Android package name and therefore we need to go into our Flutter application and you simply can then go into your Android folder, then into app, into source, into main, into this Android manifest file. And here at the top, you will find this package name. And this is exactly what we need here for this. Then you can give it here an app name. So I type here Android and this is also really important. So if you want to use later some Firebase tools like dynamic links, invite, Google sign in, you will probably use like authentication and phone number support maybe. Therefore you need at least the SHA-1. We will add both of them. So I will go here to this page, see this page. So there you find all the instructions, what you need to do. So basically you 
you need to go to Linux or Mac if you have a Linux or Mac or otherwise you need to copy this one here. So I take this and copy this and then you need to go into your terminal or your CMD in your command line and then you simply type this. Then you need to enter a keyword. So just write in lowercase letters Android and then enter. And yeah, that's it. You get here then two keys. First of all, the SHA-1 and also the SHA-256. So I will first of all add this SHA-1 and I go here back and the next thing what you need to do is then to download this Google services JSON. So I will just download it and then you go to your download folder and we need to put this file like it is shown here in this image under our app and therefore we go here into this Android folder and then into this app section and I will close this one and we need to put this into this app. So let's just drag and drop it there. There we go. Then you can here go back and click next. Now we need to do some things here. So first of all, we need to go to the build gradle in our project and simply copy this here. And therefore I go here back. I go into this build gradle of under Android directly. Here's the build gradle. And then here inside, inside these dependencies, I will add this class pass. Then we go here back and you see here also that we need to put this here inside, apply plugin. And this is what we will also put into the app module and build gradle. So we need to go here under app and this time this build gradle. So not this one, there's a second one. And here we simply copy this or paste this here inside at the bottom of our file. And I will also put here some other thing inside. So I will put here this multi dex enabled inside. So if your app is not working without this, then you put it inside. And also I will put this um, here under dependencies, this multi dex So these both lines here um, is just in case that it is not working, then you can add them. So I think it will be fine if you add them. And that's it, I think, for the Android integration part. Now we go back here into the browser and click on next. And then we can skip the last step. And I want to do also another thing. Sometimes we need the SHA-256 also. So I just put them right now inside because I have still the console open. So you can find here SHA-256. Just copy this one and also put it here inside. All right, then you have this Android app integrated. The next thing what we do is we click on add app. And now we do the same thing for iOS. So now we need to get, first of all, the iOS bundle ID. And you can do this by, first of all, going to your Xcode. So let's see here, open in Xcode, you can press if you press on this iOS folder. And for this step, you need to have a Mac. So it's really important. Otherwise, ask a friend if he has a Mac and he can do it and he can do it for you. So basically we go to the runner section and here you see the bundle identifier. So you need to copy this and paste it here into this field. And we also can give it your name. So I type here iOS. And if you have an App Store ID, which means you have already like an App Store account, if you later want to go into production, then you can also type in here your ID. Otherwise it's fine. You just can register the app. All right, then you need to download this Google service file and go again to your download folder. And there you see this file. So again, take this info plist file. And then we need to go to our Xcode again and simply and simply take this file and drag it into the right location. So we need to drag it inside of the runner runner. So here's runner and there's another runner and we need to drag it here inside. And then you see here a target where you need to check it obviously and then press here on finish. All right, and that's it for the iOS step configuration. This one is really fast. And then we can close Xcode again because we're done. We click here on next and next and also next because we don't need these steps and then skip this gap. And the last thing what we want to do is we also want to set up the web app. So I go here into web, create this app. 
And here you can simply call it, for example, web. You can include the Firebase hosting if you want to host directly with Firebase your website. So I totally recommend it. So put the check inside and simply wait until it's registered here. Now we need to do some further steps. So if you have Flutter project, you normally have now every time a web folder. Otherwise, search for a web integration with Flutter, then you see how you get this folder. And here inside we have index.html and here we need to put some integration inside. So go here back to the browser, click on next, on next because we don't need them and then continue to the console. And now back you have your web selected and then you go here to the Firebase snippet and instead of automatic, we will choose config. Then you simply copy this here and then we go here at the top under this body, start and here we need to add another script. And inside of the script, we simply write your web apps Firebase configuration so just a comment for you so that you know okay here are my configurations and under it we write here firebase dot initialize app and there we put the firebase config inside so make sure that everything is spelled here correctly initialize app and yeah i simply write here also comment initialize Firebase. All right. And what we also need to do is we need to add here some further scripts above the script and under this body. And I will simply paste it here inside. So these are like three links which you have to put inside. So basically we need here, first of all, the Firebase app. That's when what we every time need if we use Firebase. And then you can add other plugins. And here, for example, if you use Firestore, then you need to have this here also integrated. And if you want to use the storage, then you also need this one here. And make sure that all the numbers are here in the same, so that we have here 7.5.0. You can also have another number, but, but they always have to be the same number. All right, that's it about the web integration. So let's go back to the browser. And then we click here on Firestore. And here at the top, you can simply click here on Create Database. So we initialize everything. Then you click here on Next directly. Then you can choose the location, so you cannot change the location later, so choose wisely. I choose here Europe. You can also choose other locations like Asia and so on. So take a location which is nearest to you, then it is faster. And just click enable, it takes some time to create this. All right, and now it's created, then we go to storage also. So this was the database and now we have here this one where we can put our files inside and I press here on next also. You cannot choose another location. It will take the same location like before. So press also done and it takes again some time. All right. And now here in the storage, you go to rules because we want to test it a little bit out. So I write here true instead and then I publish it so everyone can write and read from this database. This is not what you should have in production. We just test right now the server. Later you should put here something like false or like other thing inside. And we also go to the Cloud Firestore and do here the same. So I will just for demonstration put it here to true instead of false. And now the Firebase store is also here completely open and we can use it. And that's it about the configuration. Now we can go here into our main dart file again and here we need to write some things so that we can prove that all the settings which we did are correctly so i simply write upload so i create a new method which is called upload and then we write here functions so we call it upload and here inside first of all what we need to do is we need to initialize firebase so we write here firebase dot and then we need to import this here from the Firebase core library. And then we write here initialize app and that's it. We need to write here await in front because it takes some time. So basically this is for initialize uh, the Firebase. And now we want to use the services and to verify that everything works. So we want first of all to use Firestore and we want to create here a new collection and also a new document where we want to store our data. So first of all, I write here comment 
upload documents to Firestore and therefore you have here a class which is called Firebase Firestore and then you import this Cloud Firestore and now we can type here instance collection and I will simply create here a user collection and a document and that's it. So let's store it here as a ref in this variable and now we can write here await ref and then we can set and then we need to put here map inside so a key value pair so first of all i will put here the username and as the value i will put here alex inside all right so now we can start simply our application and test if this works. All right, and now the app is started and let's go to the browser and then let's refresh this website. And now you see that the app has updated this here. So he has created this user collection, a document with some ID and here inside we put this username and Alex. So the setup is correctly done and you can also run your app in iOS simulator or on your iOS phone and also in the web. And another thing what we want to do is to upload a file to the Firebase storage. So I write here, upload file to Firebase storage. First of all, I search here for an image and copy the image address. And then I go here back to our application so that we download this file here. So how we can do this is we write here, await http.get and then we put here this link inside so we want to get this file and we also need to import http therefore we go here at the top and write import http http dot dot and then we write here s http this will first of all return here a response and from this response there's a field which is called body bytes and we will simply put it into another variable which is called image bytes so we get like the bytes of this image which we downloaded and now is the step to put this to our firebase storage so right now if you go here to the storage it is empty so there are no files inside and we want to upload this file which we get from this link to this firebase storage and therefore we write here firebase storage and here ref Okay, first of all, we need to import this. So we need to import this Firebase storage. Then we write here child and inside we can put the pass inside. So I will put it into a folder which is called images. And then inside I will just call this file example.png file. So I just match this one here. And then you write here ref image. So it's a reference and we want to Put into this reference of our Firebase storage we want to put this data here inside so I will put these image bytes here inside and then we need to await it so it will upload it and as a result we get here the upload task and from this upload task we call on complete and in front it's important that we write here await so we don't need to await here but to wait on this on complete and i think that's it so we have uploaded this thing we also can do some more fancy stuff so i write here set state is uploaded true and i will also create here a boolean at the top so that we know okay when is the upload finished so in the beginning it is at false so there is no uploaded and later after we have done everything it's uploaded and then we can here simply type some text so i write here center child text and yeah so let's put here uploading or uploaded so if it's uploaded we need to reverse it then we show this text uploaded otherwise uploading so that you get also some feedback in the app and yeah i will also increase the text a little bit so here is font size and you can increase it to 24 for example and i think that should be fine so we need to hot restart this application and now you see here uploading and then you see uploaded so he has done everything so he has uploaded the document again to firestore 
and also to Firebase storage. So let's check it in the browser. So if you refresh this, then you see that here is a new folder with images and there is this example. And here you see this file which we have uploaded. So that's about Android and you can also close this and open this up in the web. But before I like to go here and write K is web in front of this upload of this Firebase storage. And I write here if it's not the web application. So if it's not running on Android or iOS, then we simply want to execute this. But if this is running in the web, then we don't execute it because right now Flutter doesn't support it with this package to upload file to, to Firebase storage from the web. So we can also write here web not supported yet. And yeah, let's run this in the web. And before we go into the web application, we also delete everything here. So I will delete this image. I will also delete this collection so that we can see if he is creating it also in the web application. So we can run the web application example from the terminal. So we can go to our project where it is. And then we run this command here. So it is starting our application in the web browser. And he says that he has already uploaded everything. So let's check it. So we go to our Firestore and you see he has created this user. So the storage he has not created because this is not yet supported with Flutter. And yeah, like you can see, you can easily integrate everything for Firebase for all platforms you use, Android, iOS, and also the web. And you can then go further and use this as your backend for your Flutter application. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!